League of Legends lore videos are so long, so I thought why not do a super quick and interesting facts only about champions for TikTok brains like me and you. I will do each video in alphabetical order and today I will do any champion beginning with the letter A. Let's do Aatrox. I know my guy looks like a villain but dude was actually a hero. He used to defend Shurima which is a place in Rune Terror, as an Ascended and Ascended are these chosen godlike warriors that are really overpowered. But the people of Shurima got all insecure about how strong the Ascended were so it betrayed them and one of those people was Aatrox. Then dude finds a sword, is pissed off, gets cursed energy and becomes a Darkin. Now disclaimer, the Darkin is inside the sword and controls Aatrox. It's like this weird cursed energy thing going on. And now, because of the Darkin, his sole purpose is to eradicate all existence because dude is convinced he will be free from his suffering if he does that. Feels bad for Aatrox, he got done dirty. Fun fact, do you know the item Sterex Gauge in League of Legends? It's actually based on Aatrox's hand. Time for the next champ, Ari. Ari was initially a fox, a fox that wanted to be a human. Yeah, I know it's kind of weird, but long story short, the fox is a battle of humans and one of the humans who dies in that battle, his essence is absorbed by Ari and then she becomes a human. And when she's human, she's actually a villain at first. Well, kind of a villain because she goes around using humans for their life essence, taking their soul or the other bullshit. And eventually she feels guilty and shit and then ends up protecting innocent lives. Oh, and she's from Ionia. Next champ, Azir. Azir was the emperor of Shu. He was actually meant to become ascended, which I said earlier, these overpowered people. His buddy Zerith gets all salty about it and betrays Azir, which leads to Azir's death. Side note, Zerith wants to remove slavery in Shurima. Azir also wants to do that, but Azir is taking too long, therefore Zerith betrays him. So Zerith isn't really a villain or a snake. Or maybe he is. I don't know. You tell me in the comments. Then, a millennia later, Severe, a descendant of Azir, does some magic shit and boom, my guy Azir comes back. And now he is powerful as shit with crazy magical powers and wants to build his empire again. So who's next? Amumu. Amumu is from ancient Shurima. So like the old Shurima. And basically, man's just cursed with eternal loneliness. And he's actually very powerful too, but he doesn't really care about that. He just wants a friend. And as of right now, 2024, the League of Legends lore has still given him no friends. Kind of sad. I feel kind of bad for him. Oh, well, we move on. Anivia. Anivia is made from ice and is the guardian of Freyjord. She dies on repeat and comes back to life on repeat from her own ashes. Kind of weird and cool at the same time. And it says when she comes back, she's meant to be smarter and stronger each time too. Fun fact, she is a demigod and the sister of Volibear and Orn. And the three of them together defend Freyjord. I'm not gonna lie, Anivia herself is quite boring and there's not really much interesting stuff about her. What about everyone's favorite Konoichi, Akali? Akali is from Ionia with other ninjas like Irelia, Zed, Shen, Kennen, Yasuo, etc. I know I was surprised about Kennen too. Her master is Shen and partially Kennen. Shen basically teaches her the most and she's in his clan or group called the Kinko Order. But long story short, it gets a bit complicated as Akali leaves the order as she she believes the order is too passive when Ionia gets invaded and she disagrees with that approach hence she is called the rogue assassin. Side note Ionia gets invaded by a lot of places the big one is Noxus where Swain, Darius all of those villains are from. Time for the underage champion Annie. Basically she is this super overpowered child that slaps people in the law. We don't know where she is from but she has an adopted family from Noxus. Noxus is this place very grey and ugly same place as Darius, Swain and shit and Katarina. Fun fact well kind a sad fact but Annie loses both her parents and her stepsister dies now she's all alone more or less kind of sad but she's this fire freak with a bear so I don't really feel pity for her Akshan Akshan had a mentor who he loved a lot called Shadia Shadia was a sentinel of light the sentinel of lights were these good guys who used to fight darkness blah 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 Lucian and Senna are also in there Shadia taught him a lot and introduced him to Lucian and Senna Viego kills Shadia by just one tapping her Akshan gets all salty and upset and you know all depressed and shit, looks for vengeance and becomes desperate to kill Viego, blah 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 blah. He does technically kill Viego in the end, spoiler alert. Finally, some say Akshan's ability to bring people back to life is motivated by Shadia dying and it's him refusing to let anyone else die. Kind of cute and freaky at the same time. Alistar! Did you know Alistar's whole tribe was killed by Noxian invaders? Therefore, Alistar was captured and forced to fight in an arena for the amusement of others. Dude was treated like a circus monkey, basically. Then this slave called Aelia was all kind and shit and risked her life to free him. Did Aelia die in the law? I don't actually know. She probably did, to be fair. Can someone comment that and let me know, please? What about Aurelian's soul? Aurelian's soul is the 
fattest being in all of Rune Terra. Kinda. Aurelian is this spirit entity who legit created the stars and made the cosmos. Normally, he doesn't give a shit when he makes life, but eventually falls in love with a place called Rune Terra. By in love, I mean he is interested in the people of the place. I don't know if that's a bit weird or not, to be honest with you. He is a celestial dragon. So I would say in terms of League, he is the most powerful being in League of Legends lore. Or she, or it, or they. I don't know, actually. You tell me. Aphelios. Aphelios literally cannot speak. Like forever, he can't speak. He is literally the silent assassin. And he's a silent assassin because he had poison to heighten his abilities, but lost his ability to speak. Was it worth it? I don't know. He is a follower of the Lunari faith. The Lunari faith are these moon worshippers, basically, who hate the sun worshippers, called the Solari. Fun fact, Leona is a part of the Solari faith. Hence the item iron of the locket Solari in League. Aphelios is also madly obsessed with his sister Alune who actually made all of his weapons for him. And just like Aphelios, Diana is also a Lunari worshipper, but they've never actually met each other in the law. I thought that was kind of cool. And finally, we have Asher. Sadly, guys, Asher is married to Trindamir. And what's even worse is that it wasn't even a love marriage. It was actually a political marriage for the clans to unite and protect Freyjord. Side note, Freyjord is this icy, bloody, rubbish, ugly area. I can't lie to you. So you know Sejuani, the horse beast rider girl? She's actually Asher's rival. They don't hate each other, but Asher's basically basically all about peace when it comes to defending Freyjord and Sejuani is all about the violence. She wants the beef. She's all about that heat. Another fun fact, in the past there were these three sisters who used to defend Freyjord and they were busted as shit. Their names were Avarosa, Cyrilda and Lysandra. Long story short, Sejuani and Ash believe they are the descendants of those sisters. Basically one of the sisters used to use a bow just like Ash. Are they right? Are they wrong? I don't actually know. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit short and I wanted it to be to the point, to the point, to the point for people like me and you. I don't like long videos. I find them kind of boring. If you enjoyed this video and want there to be another letter, B, C, D, E, let me know. Type it in the comments and thank you so much for watching. Check out my Twitch and check out my socials. I love you. Have a good day. Thank you so much for watching me. Take care and see you soon.